from a you are revealed to Loria to pretty boy, pretty boy fail will deserve his failures. Having a massive amount of success on YouTube and becoming a GOAT to the NBA 2K community and having a powerhouse couple to being accused of faking videos and becoming what he has labeled himself, a villain. I mean, he's, to be fair, bro, he's not the only YouTuber that fake his videos, bro. He's not the, he, he's not the first one, to, uh, he's not the first YouTuber to make fake his videos. There's mad other YouTubers that fake, that fake their videos as well, so yeah. That's just I slowly became the villain. Bro, what? You are 30 years old, grown ass man, talking about I slowly became the villain. All we wanted you to do was stop faking your videos, my boy. You did all that extra sh What are you talking about? Regardless of all that, Fredo's returned to YouTube after a year of no online activities, with this video explaining why he's been gone and how what he did in the past wasn't right, among other things that we'll get more into later. But his comeback has raised some eyebrows from a lot of people, including Annoy, a Twitch streamer who had this to say. Mikey was basically telling me they ended up like taking his houses and taking cars and shit like that but he never really owned a lot of things and he was really leasing a lot of things so he basically got evicted is the information ssh member mikey shared with annoying credible maybe while fredo going broke or in debt isn't entirely far-fetched given his history of admitting that he doesn't have the money like when fredo's editor itolo last year went on a historic run exposing fredo believe me we'll get into that as well but the timing raises questions why is this coming up now and why does annoying only know about this again is all this credible and my answer is again maybe but you know the curiosity got the best of a nigga and let's just say after some digging on the internet annoying tv might be right but to get to that point, we need to go back a bit around here, 2016-ish, to fully understand the allegations of what Mikey and Annoying are talking about. Cause ain't no way this is true, right? Well, I'm sure that many of you are aware of- Yep, that's 20, 2016. I feel like that's everybody's favorite. It seems like that's everybody's favorite year, 2016. Is either 2016 or 2017. That's every- Those are two that's like people's favorite years, bro. Fredo's transformation from a beloved figure in the gaming community to a quote-unquote villain. Yeah, that's kind of corny. <laughs> okay, whatever. But it wasn't a sudden quick transition to that. This man was on top of the YouTube world back in 2016 and 2017. For the people who don't understand the SSH- I ain't gonna lie, there's other YouTubers like, as well, like, that was like, like, lit in 2016. You know, like, CJ So Cool, DMB Nation, they was doing mad reactions. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Nace Life, Barwadas, I'm just naming, I, I don't have no particular order, just, I'm just naming a couple YouTubers, Phase Rug, um, you know, like, you know, just mad other YouTubers, bro. Movement Fredo had going on, let's take a nostalgic trip back. Uh, Flight Reacts, my fault, Flight Reacts, he had a, he had a mill back in 20, 2016. 2016. It's 2016 and this Odell Beckham hairstyle had the black community in a chokehold. The Snapchat era as well. The music was nice. Anyway, you're returning from a long day in middle or high school. Let's say you are a black 13 to 17 year old nigga. You go to your room and chill and open up YouTube. You have options like Chris Smooth, T Pendel, Gento, Soluminati, and Pretty Boy Fredo. You already watched most of them the other day, so you pick Fredo. His videos at the time were pure in the like I didn't watch Soluminati until like 2017. I've, that's how I first discovered him. Logic masterpieces with NBA 2K videos being the main niche of his channel. The clamp god he would call himself, as he would lock up anybody who dared to talk trash to him. The man was up there with the kings of the 2K community. There's no doubt about that, and still is. This is where SSH originated, which stands for Savage Squad Hoopers. He had many catchphrases, which included Green Bean, Clamp God. Let that and so on. That but there was also his insane story times, roasting sessions. Oh look, Bruce drop him off. Why you th Damn, Bruce drop him off. I you know that was Bruce drop him off at first. When I first watched, when I first watched this this, this Fredo video, I didn't know it was Bruce drop him off at first. But damn, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Bruce has a long neck, bro, in this flick, bro. He was getting away with this boy. Bruce, Bruce, I'm on your ass, boy. Yo, <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? Bruce, why is your neck so strong, man? How many thoughts you got? I said that nigga got about four, five, six, seven thoughts, bitch. You got abs in his throat, flexing. Whoa! I ain't gonna lie, Bruce has a pretty long neck, bro.
Bruce Neck look crazy. This was his original fan base, and it would only increase as he slowly strayed away from 2K and focused more on infamous IRL content, like his pranks and social experiments. They would gain millions of views, like my girl deleted my career on 2K, or she threw my video game console in the pool, or his most viewed video being the fake proposal with his girl Jasmine. Yeah, remember that? That was a moment in YouTube history, and it collected a cool 50 mil. I think it's safe to say that Fredo was in his bag during this stretch. He was gaining millions of subscribers like it was nothing. He gave back to his fans, he had a very strong fan base, nothing could go wrong. And you ain't better at house. I'm gonna tell you guys the worst part about it all. This kid had his fans spamming me on Twitter death threats to my daughter. To my child. An innocent being. How disgusting and a pig you are. You do not deserve a channel. You are canceled. And In summary, Fredo switched his content, not necessarily for the better. He strayed away from 2K content and relied heavily on fake content during the late 2010s and early 2020s. Meaning this getting robbed in the hood video was fake. Catching a video was fake. And the infamous gold digger pranks were obviously fake. It worked. You know, it was collecting a cool million views. But, uh... It's not sustainable. A lot of these videos are deleted due to countless videos of creators from the 2K community pointing it out like the legend Hank the Tank. So you guys see this screenshot right here. Pretty Boy Fredo doing his intro to his video. He's introducing the quantum video that he's about to do. But if you see in the background right there, there's already a hole in the wall. You know where that came from? That is shown later in the video that Jasmine hits it because she gets quote unquote mad at Fredo for someone with that she gets mad about that i guess but why is that already in the beginning of the video and all you fredo fanboys who are still about to dislike this video do not and of course agent zero zero many of you know him from amp but he was heavily involved in the 2k community back then before amp and in a nutshell he was like a political speaker for the community he was the voice of reason and concern of any and everything about 2k so when he dropped the oh so many videos exposing fredo for fake pranks the community supported what agent had to say it wasn't bad until fredo dropped this video of a public gathering with his fans during 2020 which was the lockdown years and you know fredo wasn't supposed to do that because the vid was at an all-time high nonetheless he did an agent dropped a reaction to it and i rarely ever make that type of content but you do so many crazy things that from time to time i just indulge why did i just show this random reaction because fredo responded to it and it wasn't pretty i wish nothing but the worst for you seriously i wish this nigga, this nigga, he, he had to add glitzy gobbler bro this nigga fail nah, I ain't gonna fail was bugging at the time, bro. Like, he was nothing but the worst for you. You, you ugly piece of shit, you trash as hell. You wish you wish death for my daughter. I wish nothing but the worst for you, my nigga. That's on everything that I love. So Fredo, I never did that. What you just did right there, I never did that. Now are you saying that all those death threats I've been getting about me and my family and my friends for the past few days? You're responsible for those? I mean, you did explicitly ask people to go there with malicious intent. I was working with facts. I saw something, I criticized it. When you reacted, you were not working with facts. You were willing to just bridge any gap to make- Fredo was working with, like, um, emotions, bro. Fredo we just responded with emotions. That's, that's about it. It seemed like I was an evil human being when you know that not to be the case. Funny thing is, is most people know that not to be the case. But your fans, your impressionable fans, they ain't know that. That's why they sat there sending me those death threats. They think I'm an evil human being. I can't blame them for that. Only information they have about me is what you told them, and it's pretty damning information, if I should say so myself. Slowly, the strength of his fan base would slip away. One reason, his fan base was getting old, and that type of content he was doing just didn't hit anymore to the masses. And two, how many videos he faked, and three, the countless beefs he got himself into. The fan bases he battled just made it worse, like Pontiac made DDG. This beef started because of the infamous basketball game between the two. What a time that was. The rules were simple. Win the game, you get the right to claim you're a better player. The loser had to do a punishment. DDG won the first game, and Fredo ignored the punishment and wanted a rematch because, you know, his ego was, a. Uh, as hell. But this time, Fredo wanted it indoors, as if this was gonna change anything. This rematch also wasn't planned, by the way. DDG won the second game. But in that game, it was very heated. Fredo being the loser, started talking sh 
NDG wasn't having any of that. Nigga is fing following me. Yeah, I know. And when I score, he's not trying to call it a point. Oh, yeah. oh, it's not it's my ball. Long story short, after the constant back and forth, Freddie would take it a step further and remix DDG's biggest song to date, Moonwalking in Calabasas, and dissed his dead brother. Took out smoke in the air and I can't wait to let it. And you knew the killer how the f you ain't ride, you touch one of my he made the music video in Pontiac, Michigan, and even going the extra mile of shutting a bridge down in broad daylight. Well, that moment for Fredo didn't even last a week because the music video was copyrighted and taken down by DDG. My well, even though it's not even in his channel, it's still it's still on YouTube. The music is still on YouTube. It's still on YouTube, by the way. It may not be on his on Fredo's channel, but it's on YouTube still. Somebody must have re upload that shit. Dude, this all started because of Fredo losing a basketball match and his ego couldn't handle it. The beef still goes on to this day as the two still talk about each other, but not in the same magnitude as before. Of course, there's many more beefs Fredo got himself into, but I want to get into the main part of the video. So if you want to see the full breakdown of Fredo's downfall, or whatever you want to call Fredo's situation, watch JBM Fargo's documentaries on him. He got the best ones out by far. But because of me skimming these parts, let's get to the main point, or the main part of the video. So after the constant backlash Fredo has gotten from the beefs, Pretty boy, you shot! Get the gun, let me smoke it off Fredo! Then of course, the insane stunts he pulled off, Fredo, I ain't gonna lie, that was, that was cringe of Fredo, uh, uh, he, why would he, why would he agree to put on a dress, bro, oh, come on, bro. The people in his circle, he quote unquote scammed. However, as a human being, as a person, as a 30 year old man that he is, I cannot respect that. Not paying Tolo. At this point, getting all these views about me, it's about $3,000 I'm owed. From that second channel, I spent $2,000 on personal, okay? After all that fiasco he went through, Fredo posted one video in 2023, being this lighthearted video with Jasmine, and then he completely disappears for a year. There would be tweets referencing what would be going on in his life, but that would be it. And then he came back with a comeback video. And you know, I watched it, ready to be critical, but Fredo talked about what he went through, like his family troubles, and how his mom suffered through health problems, and it made sense why he was gone. He also acknowledged his switch of fake controversial content, which started the downfall of his channel, and his life in general, like his complicated relationship with Jasmine. And like everyone else, I thought all was good. Fredo was gonna go back and do his regular content with the guys, and that's it. Until there were recent rumors of him being broke. I feel like this is gonna get clipped and go viral and shit. Yeah, this is what Mikey told me directly from the SSH camp, right? Are y'all listening? All right. So basically, a long time ago, Fredo made a, a, a YouTube video, right? And the YouTube video was like best tattoo artist versus the worst tattoo artist. Basically, he asked this guy to tattoo Malik on his face, but like to mess it up intentionally. I mean, not on his face, but on his leg. Another man on him that's crazy. For the YouTube video. This was the video. <laughs> Fredo ended up going on a YouTube video bashing the brand, bashing the tattoo shop and everything, talking about how they f***ing suck, whatever. The tattoo shop ended up suing Fredo and Malik, both of them. After they were sued, Fredo didn't take the lawsuit serious, but Malik did. So Malik showed up to all the court dates while Fredo didn't show up to all the court dates. Oh my God. <laughs> so this happened about like three years ago, like it's a long time ago, right? Basically, since Malik showed up to all the court dates, Malik had to pay a fine of $10,000 to the business. Since Fredo was slacking with the court dates, he never showed up to court, never took it serious. The judge ordered Fredo to pay the tattoo shop over a million dollars. And this is real documents because Mikey showed me the documents. This is real shit. It's not a legend, this is real. Let's stop right here and do a quick summary of who Mikey is. Mikey, mostly known as Mikey. The nigga who used to um, fuck with Fredo. CEO Mikey was a part of Fredo's content creation group, SSH, and he would be doing the wildest things for content, like shaving one side of the eyebrow off. But somewhere down the line, Fredo and Mikey weren't locked in like that anymore, as stated by Annoy. Why? Well, I'll let Mikey do the talking, then we'll get back to Annoying. The Tesla! The Tesla was rented! I had to pay for the rented Tesla! He didn't even pay for it! Oh! oh. Yo, I kid you not, yo, I swear to God, I didn't Fredo and pay for shit. When he told me, yo, I need you to come to Florida for this video. I can't, I took money out of my account. Who to Florida? Yo, I need you to buy this for the video. It's my video. No hesitation. Yo, call an Uber here. It's $100. I need you to call it to be here. No hesitation. Bro, I 
I drive, th cause I live in New Jersey, he lives in New York, it's a 30 minute drive. I drive 30 minutes to New York to have him with the stream, right? And in the stream, it's just a stream of me like doing dumb, every, it's like a spin the wheel chart of like, well, Alan, so the wheel, so the stream was this, whatever the wheel lands on, the wheel had like, oh, Mikey get $10,000, Mikey get $10,000, this and that. And the, and the bad stuff, bro, I kid you not, the wheel landed on the good stuff like 30 times. <laughs> Every time, every time it lands, oh, Mikey gets 5k. This would pull his phone. I'm sending Mikey 5k right now. This nigga don't send me. Shit. I don't get scared. So, the one time it landed on a bad thing, it was to shave one of my eyebrows. This is back in December. I cut it. No, I'm not doing it. I don't do it. That was the first time I ever took it. No, I'm not doing it. This and that, right? Kick me out his house. And he continued to say, oh, Mikey's fake. Y'all go unsubscribe to Mikey. What? Ah, this and that. Mikey's a fake. He don't want to. He's not down with the game, bro. He's not down with the Savage Squad. Who knows? Brother, and get away with it. And all honesty, you shouldn't be in SSH. You should not be in SSH. Look what the f*** they spamming because of you. My Mad, y'all mad, y'all mad, y'all feel YouTube is broke. Suck my. How about, how about that? The niggas mad that they feel YouTube is broken. E my. After the court ordered Fredo to pay over a million dollars, Fredo tried to make an appeal and he wrote a letter to the judge. As he wrote a letter to the judge, the letter was basically stating, and I have the letter. Mikey showed me the letter. The letter to the judge was basically stating, yo judge, I apologize for not appearing up to any of my court dates. I've been going through a lot of things right now and I am that current. Matter, bro. You should show, you should have showed up to your court date despite you going through like personal shit, bro. You should have showed up, bro. It's to protect your money, bro. Holy homeless. That is what the letter said. Do I believe that Fredo is homeless? No. Does Mikey believe it? Yes. Something ended up happening with the court and they were basically saying they ended up like taking his houses, taking cars and shit like that. But he never really owned a lot of things and he was really leasing a lot of things. So he basically got evicted. In Mikey's situation, Mikey's like, bro, Fredo's been clowning me for a long time. This you know what I'm saying? You know how Mikey feels about Fredo? He is 100% Fredo. You know what I'm saying? But if you guys want to look up the court documents to see if they're authentic, that's on y'all, yeah, not on me. And so I did what Anoa said. The curiosity got the best of a nigga, and I wanted to see if Fredo was actually in money trouble. On some Agent 00 pocket watching type shit. It, it's a skill more than anything else. This is all alleged, by the way, but I went on the website Trellis, which is a legal analytic platform. This website can be used if someone needs to understand how past court cases have been decided. I didn't find anything about Fredo being sued for five million dollars so it then got me questioning why would this information about fredo come out now right when he makes a comeback video even some of the comments pointed that out in an annoying video on the situation but again fredo has a history of scamming people so that tattoo shop situation isn't out of the equation but as i was looking for the case online i did stumble on some public court cases involving fredo remember this is all alleged and public so if you want to look it up you can but it appears that fredo is not only accused of scamming a tattoo shop but he's also allegedly in credit card debt I'm assuming most of you already know, but this means when you borrow money from banks and credit card companies to purchase stuff, which includes things like buying a damn car or using it to pay for groceries, yada yada yada, you have to pay it back in time. This case was filed on February 15th, 2023, and it shows that Fredo hasn't paid back his credit card debt in some time. And the bills accumulated over time into a whopping 100k he has to or had to pay. Also, on the document online, it says the status is disposed. That means it's like the court saying, okay, we're done here. The decision has been made. So in this case, it means the court has looked at everything, listened to both sides, and decided who wins. In this document, it looks like National Bank won, and Fredo has to pay them a bunch of money if he didn't already. I couldn't believe it too, until I saw his damn name, Pretty Boy Fredo, plastered on some of the documents. Here's the case complaint summary if you want to read it. As of the time of this recording, this case could still be going on as it was last updated this year. It could answer why Fredo couldn't pay his editor the amount they agreed upon on time because of this mess right here. It could answer why Fredo isn't doing anything as of right now, alongside the family struggles stated in this video. How did this all allegedly happen? Well, obviously not paying back in time and just not being smart with the money. For Fredo, it could be a matter of wanting to keep up with the flashy lifestyle to impress the followers being SSH and the general public. He might have felt the need to 
keep spending money on cool stuff to look successful, even if you couldn't afford it. But this just makes the debt problem worse. Instead of focusing on fixing the finances, you're stuck trying to keep up with the rich lifestyle. This probably didn't go down in this situation for Fredo, but it's very common for people to fall into this trap. It turns out this- see, everything you see is real, bro. Like, you see these people who like to like, to, like flash their money, all that. Fresh day bread and all that shit, like back out bread and all that shit, like with these cars and see people with these nice cars, it's not even theirs, man. See, not everything, not everything you see is true. Feel me? Fabricated, Fabricated lifestyle that Fredo has or has had isn't exactly what it seems. Do I get into some? Shit? Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm human. I'm human at the end of the day, niggas gonna get through shit. niggas gonna make mistakes, niggas gonna, I'm gonna see things a certain way, niggas gonna see things other, it's just, it's just life. I'm, I'm human just like everybody else, I'm grinding, I'm going through this, this roller coaster of a life. Niggas, some days is good, and some days is horrible, bro. Just like everybody else, nigga, I'm human. This alleged news might bring joy to those who were affected by the altercations that Fredo caused. People might say karma is finally catching up with him. After all, he's not just your average YouTuber. Fredo's got a reputation for stirring up trouble. For years, he's been notorious for allegedly scamming people left and right and fighting other content creators just for the sake of it. As for the news about Fredo being sued for $5 million, I still couldn't find that info. So I guess we're gonna have to wait for Mikey to give the inside details. The obvious is, obviously don't do dumb stuff with your money. Don't rent stuff that you can't pay back on time because it will come back and bite you. And if all this is true, though we can't say for sure, despite the evidence, at least Fredo took a one year break to assess what he's done wrong and try to come back as a better man. However, history has shown us a familiar pattern. Fredo takes a hiatus and promises change, only to repeat past mistakes once again. So will this time be any different? Only time will tell. So yeah bro, let me, so yeah bro, that's the vid. Let me know what y'all think about Pretty Boy Fredo, bro. Like, it's been a month it's been months since this um like documentary video like has been dropped and Fredo has a post posted ever since bro it's been a month like now since he posted you feel me but yeah bro but we'll see like how Fredo will like will, will like we'll see how Fredo will do like if he like if he's like really like changes you feel me and so yeah bro let me know what y'all think bro do y'all jack Fredo do y'all not bro and also do y'all think Fredo is pop meaning broke like do, do y'all think he's broke? Let me know, bro. Let, yes or no? Do y'all think, in your opinion, do y'all think he's broke? Yeah, so yeah. So, um, yeah, bro, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and the vibes. We're checking out you are.